Hello, everybody. We are live. If you are on with us, or maybe you're planning on to get on with us, welcome. Um, we'll get started in a couple minutes here. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can find a song, Callie. I feel like um, I'm, I don't do a really good job at that. So <laughs> let me see if I can go find our song so that I'm not um, if there's this moment of awkward silence, at least you guys have something to listen to. Is it on? I think it may be on. Okay, there we go. All right, you guys, if you are on live with us, please let us know where you're watching us from. Callie's just sharing again, like usual, and love to do some shout outs. Um, so let me know where you're watching us from and how you're doing. Uh, it's Wednesday. Happy hump day. Hi, Janice. Oh, no. So we are in the same. So Janice says, hello, greetings from California. Some reasons I thought you guys were from North Carolina. Um, I think Callie is originally from North Carolina. Um, but we are actually both in the same time zone as you. We're, I'm from Oregon, and Callie is literally just a couple miles up north in um, Washington. So same time zone. So if you are on with us, please help us share. We'd really appreciate it. Hi, Bao. How are you? Okay, and then I am going to share this onto my personal too. So just give me a minute here. <laughs> Sacramento. Oh, we will be stopping by there. We're actually um, flying into Sacramento, going to the Fresno New Year. So maybe we'll have the pleasure of meeting some of you um, in SAC somewhere or hopefully at the Fresno New Year. Okay, I'm almost done here. Kelly, you almost done? And again, if you are joining live, please make sure you help us share. We have an amazing guest with on, uh, on with us today to kind of talk about his journey. So um, we hope that you guys can share, tag your friends, make sure you guys join us, um, stay engaged in the conversation. If you have questions um, for Chef Yeah, make sure that you put it in the comment section and we'll try to get to it um, when we can. I feel like we um, need like a new um, theme song, Callie. Every time I hear this song, all I think about is Finding Love with Charm now because we used a um, snippet of it for that particular segment. So. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, we're just going to give it another minute here and we will start the show. Hi, Shang Elizabeth Lor, C Yang, hello. <laughs> you know. King Lang, you are the gangster. The few months ago, this is your not here. Yeah, I'm not going to go. All right. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, today is Wednesday. We know it's the middle of the week um, and we typically try to be flexible with our days. So we're on either on Saturday or Wednesday. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. But welcome to all that Talk Talk Show. I'm your co-host, Olivia. I'm Kelly. And we have an awesome show for you guys today. We have the amazing Chef Yia. Um, if you guys don't know him already, um, we're going to ask him lots of different questions about his life. We're going to get him to tell us everything. So, and so the- yeah, definitely ask questions and mm-hmm. um, definitely engage. We love to um, uh, show some of your questions on our screen. So just mm-hmm. ask away. Yeah. But before we bring him on, we do have some quick updates for you guys. So um, if you haven't looked at any of our posts and not been following, we're telling you now we are coming to Fresno. Callie and I would love to meet all of you. So for those of you going, please make sure you come by our booth. We're really only there for two days, um, Friday the 31st and Saturday the 1st from 11 to 4. It's not an all-day thing. We're only going to be there for a few hours, um, but we do have a booth available to just um, meet all of you. We're going to have random people coming in and out of the booth to do meet and greets and different activities. Um, we're still working on an agenda. So once we have that finalized, we will share that with you all. So if you're interested in maybe joining for one of the activities we've got going on, you're more than welcome to come in and participate in that. And if you and are not reading our post, mama. Read it. Yeah, I'm read like- it. Kelly Cal- and I take a lot of uh, effort into writing those posts and thinking about what we're going to put. So read those. Um, and then, of course, we have our um, giveaway. Your deadline to submit your photo is midnight uh, tonight, PST. So there's still a couple hours left in the day for you to put that or send us your pictures. Um, I don't know. Someone had emailed and said that our email wasn't working or they were getting some um, notification back. So just shoot it into our DM. I think that works as well. Um, and then tomorrow, Callie and I will come on sometime tomorrow to kind of um, share next steps and how to kind of play the game with all the pictures that we've been getting. So thank you for those of you who've already submitted your photos. Like, it's so amazing to see the different types of clothing um, of our culture. And it's just really beautiful to see that there are so many people taking pictures left to right, Cal and I included. So and it doesn't have to be, yeah, and, and it doesn't have to be a current picture. So if you have mm-hmm. all you have is the old picture, definitely send that. You know, it's just um, we are taking the first 64 and we are still um, short some of that. And so definitely send it. And um, the first yeah. prize for the wedding picture is $200. So it's not like it's just 50 bucks. So um, I think that would be a really nice treat to wake up on Christmas morning and win 200 bucks. So definitely. Yeah. Her. And yes, I am drinking a Bloody Mary. <laughs> I, I, I know. And I wanted to also clarify too, because we've gotten a couple of um, questions uh, that people have sent us on whether kids can enter um, or if they can send a picture of someone else or um, block out their face. And so we do need an actual image of you with your face. Um, and we are doing 18 and over. Um, unfortunately, this time around, we're going to leave out all the kiddos. Um, we really just want 18 and over adults. So I hope that that kind of helps clears out some of that for, for, for you guys. And I think we have one last uh, announcement here. Kelly, I'll hand that over to you. All right. So if you have not heard um, of Jami, if you don't know who she is, a singer, she is an OG, um, classic, you know, real gangster. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Yes. She is a real gangster. Um, And she, um, I mean, I I grew up listening to her, you know, whenever I hear her and Luya and all the other singers, like the, just the memories of being at home and and growing up and just being super mom, you know, like, I feel like that's, that's what I, I remember and just really brings this nice warm feeling inside for me. And so if you don't know that she is having her um, Jami MTT international concert. And I love that she just like leaned into the MTT. You know, I feel like that's something that um, for so long, like if you were born overseas, which I was, um, you know, I feel like that's something that you, you know, felt like you had to like get away from. But I just love the fact that she called it MTT international 
um, uh, concert just because of that connotation. But it is on December 25th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, or that is Thailand time, um, December 26th at 10 a.m. And really what she wanted to do was provide free entertainment for the entire Hmong community, which is awesome um, throughout the world, especially all the Hmong families in Southeast Asia, because they have been hit really hard with COVID-19 and most of them will not have a New Year celebration this year. Yeah. And so um, just to, to um, uh, thank everyone for the support of the uh, sticky rice um, from the Hmong families, they've decided to do this, which again, if you have not tried her sticky rice, it is, it's the it is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I mean, it's definitely not um, uh, cheap, but it's it's really good. And it's really easy to make in your rice, rice cooker. Um, and so some of the singers that they are going to have, of course, is Jami herself, um, Lu Ya, um, Li Gong, um, Mai Muaku, um, and a slew of many other, and Mang Vang. Mang Vang is one that I've been just like, I've just really been loving his music and his voice. And mm -hmm. um, and so uh, just a great lineup. And I, I think the fact that it's free and like that they, I think sometimes we like, put free with like cheap or like we don't you know like no if we value don't value it right and so mm -hmm. um you know these are some of our singers that um have that we grew up with that have always been alive when we've you know been alive and so i really encourage everyone to participate to listen and support um it's it's a gift for us to be, still have these artists still here with us you know Mm -hmm. um, uh, the fact that they still sing and, you know, like my mom still sounds like exactly the same as like mm -hmm. when you know, first song. I think they like, all do. Yeah. And, and just yeah. the fact that like, I feel like the Hmong artists y'all is so, mm -hmm. uh, they have just been like legit singing some really good song. Like there was a song that I heard, it was like the, um, uh, nya, nya. I don't know if you're, it's so like, every time I listen to it, people are always like, oh my gosh, that is so like Hmong, you know, but it's just so it's good. It's like, yeah, and the rapping, like everyone's rapping nowadays. I'm even considering starting a rap career. So if you see my music video, <laughs> oh, please come support me. But um, Wait, I did, I did tag you on something. <laughs> you Remember, I was trying to be your manager. I know. And, and, and that night yeah. I was like trying to rap and then I was like, you know what? I'm probably better off just going to work, but um, I can still kind of dream. And so again, that is going to be on um, December 25th. And so that is Saturday on Christmas Day at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you are with family, definitely just turn it on, watch, listen, mm -hmm. enjoy it with your family, especially your parents who are probably, you know, that that's going to bring a lot of fun memories for them and just, just tune in and have fun with them. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> on to the actual show. So thank you guys so much for um, listening to our announcements. I think we've got so much going on. We'll come back on tomorrow and kind of share more and just um, really talk things through because, you know, we always love to talk about different random things and create little different content for you guys. But we'll move on with the show. So Callie, if you could introduce our guests and let's bring him on. All right, so we have with us tonight Chef Yia. He is the owner of Union Kitchen, um, and he is also opening up a um, restaurant that is supposed to open next year called Vinai. So even just more perfect. And again, leaning into that mom, like just like really leaning into that of who we are, right? And so super excited to have him on with us tonight. Hello. Hey. How are Hello. you? Good, good. Good. I keep forgetting you guys are uh, West Coast, so yeah, it's like a little later over here. No, <laughs> when we were setting up time, and I'm like, wait, what time? What? What's the time zone? <laughs> I was like, oh man, nine o'clock. That's like, you know, yeah. like putting on sweatpants, watching TV. Time. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect yeah. For just to come and chat with us and have everybody um, at home and just hang out with us tonight. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're at a just finishing dinner and you're at almost fourth meal, you know? Oh, time, right. Extra dessert. <laughs> More plain. like just scanning sports center and be like, ah, what's, you know, what's, what's going on? <laughs> uh, all right, Kelly, should we just get started? I'll let you have the first one. 
All right. So, um, of course, you know, I think that in our Hmong culture, we grew up and um, girls typically learn how to cook mm -hmm. and then the boys kind of um, watch and learn how to do gai. Did I say that right? gai. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to work on my mom a little bit. Um, and so, you know, as a chef, you're, you know, in an unconventional path as a Hmong man. Um, have you seen it that way? Has anybody ever, you know, made comments about the fact that you are in the kitchen and you're probably cooking better than most of your girlfriends or the women <laughs> in your life? <laughs> First off, no girlfriends. So, um <clears throat> You know, I think one of the things that I, I learned, especially from my mom and dad, I think, especially my dad, is you can be anything you want. You know, you can do anything you want. You can be anything you want. Um, you know, dad really instilled inside of us this whole idea of like, hey, like work hard and focus, you know. And so I, I you know, like I tell people, I never wanted to be a cook, chef, whatever you want to call it. Um, I actually don't even really like the title chef, which was really weird. Um, but um, I never wanted to do it. That was never the intention. Um, one of the things I, I told, I've told people many years is that when I started cooking, it was just um, I, I'm not I'm not really that good at it. I'll, I'll be very honest. Like, I wasn't that good at it when I first started. It was um, I was one of the cooks that would come in that you know I lived a pretty clean life, so I wasn't the hungover, drugged out, or you know ending up in jail that night. You know, so I would just show up on time. Uh, the chefs I worked for really liked me. Uh, and I could keep up with the tickets. You know, when the tickets were printing, I could keep up with the tickets. And so, uh, I, and I just wanted to be good at it. You know, it was just like, oh, you know, this is a job. And I want to be really good at it. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of like having that long relationship where it's like, you date for a while, you break up, you date for a while, you break up. And it's like, you're like 10, 15 years into it. And you're like, man, I might as well put a ring on it. Because it's like, you're the only thing I know. And I think I really love you now. You know, and that's how my relationship with uh, the restaurant world is in the kitchen world, you know. Uh, eventually, after uh, I would say, um, um, man, I would say after like ten years of doing that, like just in and out of college, and you know, doing or you know, being in college and doing that, uh, I was like, man, I might as well. I really want to. Um, I really want to see where this leads me. You know, so like I went to school, I got a degree in interpersonal communication, I minored in PR and marketing. You know, I, I never wanted to do this. And, and then I started working at these big restaurants. And as I started working in these restaurants, I found out that some of the some of the favorite foods at these restaurants, and there are a lot of like big, like fancy Mikau restaurants, that some of the foods that they love eating was the food that we were making at home, like Hmong, like Hmong style, you know, East uh, Southeast Asian style food. Yeah. And so you have all these big name chefs who are like, man, like, this is the stuff that hits my heart. And then eventually from there, I went back and uh, just sat by my mom's table and learned from mom and dad. And so growing up, like you're right, like mom and my aunties and my sisters, they did a lot of cooking. But like if we look at Hmong tradition now, a lot of the like parties, like when it comes to protein or butchery, like a lot of the, you know, a lot of the men, the boys, we would do that. And that's what I did growing up. The tombo, like dad would, you know, dad, get my tombo. As kids, like we didn't grow up like playing t-ball or basketball or going to the Y for a swim club. We didn't do that. Dad would think tombo or eat the new much like a holograph, yeah? And then he gave us a knife and like, we just started breaking it down, you know? So it was, it, it I became very comfortable. I'm I, like, I told, I've told these food writers, I said, I, I was more comfortable holding a knife, breaking down the side of a pig than I was like holding a baseball and learning how to throw curveball as a kid, you know? And uh, I think that that was just something too. And then, you know, in our home too, my, my, my mom and dad, the way they raised us was we didn't have like, Oh, you, you do you do you do like, my dad, I, that's what I think I really love the way that my mom and dad raised us. They were very like, everyone helps in the house. Everyone, you do your part. If it's your time to wash the dishes, you wash the dishes. We, we have to work together. And I think that that really instilled inside of all of us, you know, that idea of like, it's not that as men and women, we are created equally, but we, we have, there are different roles that we might play, you know? So that's kind of what my dad taught us in the house. Uh, so it was very, uh, you know, I, I always, as a kid, I loved cooking because I didn't have to do dishes. This is really the only reason why. I hated doing dishes. And the rule was if you cook, you, you know, you don't have to do dishes. So I would like jump in and my dad would get home from work and my mom would still be working second shift. My dad would get home from work and he kind of tell me what to put together. And I just kind of like, yeah, well, just, we'll see how it goes. And then I became more comfortable that way. So yeah, there wasn't no like these traditional 
like you know like boy and girl roles but it was more like how do we help together you know that's amazing I like that my um I, at one point in time i i have uh two moms i have nila and Neil, um at and at one point they worked second shift and I still remember like the food that my dad would cook. And it wasn't anything like super crazy fancy, you know? Um, it was usually like me, ghee, yeah? like literally like, oh, yeah. ramen. not not even like pho, noodle, ghee, like that, yeah. but it was like ramen. I, I still like, that was like legit so good. Not because it was, you know, like my mom, you know, my mom's is cooking is always, always super yummy. But I think the mm -hmm. fact that like my dad would cook for us, like that was really, um, it, it was just really special. And so I think it's especially um, great to see, you know, yeah. a young man that cooks and, you know. Well, you know, the, you know, Kelly, you were, you were saying about the Mikina. Uh, we, we had a recipe like that. Like, we had that growing up too. And, it, you know, like that was like kind of like after school. It's like, we, we, you know, so some really quickly we put on and we actually used that recipe and it was put in a book. Oh, you know? wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there's like, there's this big uh, celebrity comedian down here named uh, Charlie Barron. He's like a really big dude. So I did a, uh, I did a podcast with him and he wrote this big book about uh, like it's called the Midwest Survival Guide. So it's all it's like funny things about the Midwest and weird little quirks that we do, you know, in the Midwest. And he had a whole section that we talked through about the bone people on there. And then he put in the uh, Mickey recipe in there, you yeah. know. And so so it's something that's like really simple to us. But uh, I've used it. We used it many times on uh, different TV shows and different, you know, different things that we've done where people have called messaged us and said, that you know that dish feeds my family like instant yeah. ramen noodles. we just call stir fry instant ramen noodles yep. you know and they're like yeah that that fed my family and it's like mika people too they're like we love it it's like mm -hmm. our go-to dish that we do and it feeds the four of us and it's simple and we can do it in under 30 minutes so and you it's can add all sorts of stuff in it i think that's mm -hmm. a nice thing like you you really can kind of you know put veggies yeah. and stuff if you want yeah it's it's literally i tell people it's kind of like one of those like leftover dishes right where you go oh i got some broccoli that's left over oh we got like half a pound of ground beef oh what do we have here oh we have some zucchini oh we have some carrots like yeah. and, and that noodle and everything and so I, I think that so when we put it up as this we did this show and we put it on there I, I thought I was like, man, I'm about no, I don't think anybody was gonna like it. My mom kind of laughed at me about it. And then we got all this, like, pe all these, like, people, a lot of me got people, they're like, moms, you know, they're like, hey, this dish is incredible. Um, could you explain more? Mm -hmm. And so, what's really cool, what I found out is the food that we grew up with, where we were like kids, we were like, man, I don't know, I'm kind of embarrassed about it, is actually food that today, like, a lot of, you know, like a lot of me got people are like, this is what we are looking for. This is something mm -hmm. that we, you know, instead of being over, like for a lot of moms, like, you know, like, um, you know, moms who are like in their thirties and they have like, you know, they have all these kids and you guys have kids and stuff like that too. And, you know, you know, I mean, it's like, we, we want to cook for our family. Yeah. But we have like, recipes. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's simple. It's like instant ramen. You guys have that in your house all the time. And then it's yeah. all these scraps. And so, you know, so like when you're talking about Mickey, I'm like, yeah, like, for us, we're like, oh, no, no, you know, but I mean, it became this big dish where everybody was asking about it. And, you know, these big companies, um, uh, Target, you know, you know, this big corporate Target here had me go in and do it as a as a demo for them, you know, because they were like, oh, this is really cool. We can get all this stuff at Target, you know, and so like it was just really cool. And I just I'm just really proud of stuff like that, that we grew up with where we didn't think there had much value. But. Now, as we look at it, it has a very deep value and has a rich tradition. Yeah. I think everybody kind of grew up on a stir fry meat, uh, meat kina, right? Like, mm -hmm. I know that at least for me, I didn't really eat a lot of noodles, but my mom made things that are just um, very simple because they're always on the go and they can't really, uh, the home, mm -hmm. like the true, like, true home cooked meals um those doesn't have they, they don't happen very often but the ones where they whip up something really quick and show it not much chore because we gotta mm -hmm. go um i think i think then it's kind of like you said we we don't appreciate it as much but i think as we age those are the things we crave for the most which is crazy and right? it's, so the, it's so simple. The, the feeling y'all because mm -hmm. it's like you know like when i think about mong food i think about like eating with i have seven brothers and and mm -hmm. you know three parents and so it's like 
a big family eating together. And even though we don't have a lot of food, like, you know, just because there's so many of us eating together. Um, and I feel like it's the the feelings that we get from it, the memories that we hold with it, that, you know, that our parents might feel like, you know, of all the things you could pick, but it's like, but those are the things that, you know, make me feel close to you because those are the yeah. memories that I hold to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I one of the things, just a little side note here. One of the, my favorite dishes is, uh, you know, uh, um, like it's mm -hmm. number one, hands down. I I eat that and I drink that broth. It takes me back to mom and dad's table. So one time, I, a couple of years this happened a couple of years ago. Um, my mom and dad told me, "Let me get the let me hold it," and then the top, the top young guy, let me get the and mm -hmm. then and then mom and dad mom, like no you put the whole you pull out in your and show and then all the meat they'll save it for us kids you know we they used to do that oh, yeah. for us when we were kids and and mom and dad always did that because they're like we don't want you to have to pick through that like we'll we'll, we'll have that all nice for you it was a couple years ago i went and I stopped at mom and dad's house for lunch and I, mom's like hey no no she, i know she i'm like yeah and you know that's what they had and i'm like oh awesome and my favorite thing is like it's my it's my favorite right? i love it like i eat i love that stuff and I, I remember going out, going out to buy some more, and my mom was like, "No, so not your car. Go more than like the original car." Dude, I'm third. You know, I was like what, 35, 34 at that time. Like I'm a grown man, and mom still does that for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you, it's less about the dish and more about that memory. It's more about like what that dish represents. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a grown man. You know what I'm saying? And my mom still more young. I taught that. Like she wasn't, she wasn't even anticipating me coming over for lunch. She knew that what if he came over for lunch, we want him to have the good stuff. Yeah. And she does it for all, you know, all my siblings. It's still, and we're all grown up. And and I watched the way that my mom and dad, for my nieces and nephew, it's exactly the same. It's never changed. It's that constant love that never changes. And I think that, no, I think, I know, and I believe that that's what makes Hmong food different from a lot of food. You know, mm -hmm. it is that constant love that's passed down from generation to generation. And that and that's what, for us, when we do the food that we do, it's not about trends. It's not about what's cool and sexy right now. You know, it's actually about saying, hey, this is what mom and dad taught us. How do we hand this down? As I teach some of our cooks, a lot of our cooks are more, you know, we have cooks from all over, all over, you know, all different life, you know? And and I as I teach them, especially even all your mom blown, huh? like I, I tell them, like, guys, when you guys cook the sticky rice, I want you guys to taste it. And then when you guys make the kotsaw, when you make the, the hot sauce, I don't want you to taste the hot sauce with a spoon. I want you to take the, uh, the mumblo and dip it in the kotsaw. That's how you taste it, you know, if you have it right. And so it's so cool to watch this generation of like young, like black, white, uh, Mexican, you know, uh, Chinese uh, cooks that are cooking with us and they're cooking mung food, stuff that mom and dad is making at home. And we got yeah. one of the kid with this kid, his name is white kid, his name is Kenny. Kenny's one of our, he's one of the best at making sticky rice. Kenny's a, He's a white kid. He's like 24 years old, you know, on hair, like real good looking white dude, you know, skinny. <laughs> but I'm like, dude, you make the best sticky rice here, bro. Like you just take care of it, mm -hmm. you know? And then that to me, that's awesome, you know, to, to be able to translate mom and dad's legacy and their love and who they are to other people that are around. Yeah. I love, I love that. You're making me hungry. I know. <laughs> you got you got your bloody Mary. It's, you know, it's kind of like a dish. <laughs> uh, so when you first started on your chef path, what did you envision for yourself and how has that changed over the years? Uh, I didn't envision anything. I, I, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, my buddy and I, we always laugh about this because I, uh, I always quote Vin Diesel from Fast and Furious. You know, I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just that's how that's how I've always lived my life. It's like, hey, how can I make it to the next week? How was make it? When you're young, that's that's easy, you know, because you're shooting from the hips. You're like, yeah, whatever, yeah, I'm gonna go. And then as you get older, um, and, and as I, I so I, I got done working at these really big kind of fancy restaurants around town here. They're really big, incredible chefs. Learned a lot, but I just felt like you know I, I wanted to have my own voice. And so, uh, so we started out with doing little pop ups, you know. And it was like, if we can, if people come to the first one, maybe we'll do a second one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's how it was. And we were very blessed. The first one, we had like 220 people show up. Wow. You know, it was a small restaurant, hold only 45 seats. So for like five hours, it was just constantly turning, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then I think that uh, after that, we kind of started, you know, slow. You know, like I tell people, we started with $300 in my checking account. 
my my goal was to make the money back and then have a little bit for gas for next week. Like yeah. that's it. Like I, I just I was like, okay, I'm just gonna we're gonna figure this out. Um, but I was able to do that because I have loving, uh, loving siblings who just said, "Hey, just come live in our house for free. You don't have rent, you know. They, like live, live very, very simple, you know, stuff like that." But so there wasn't really no, there wasn't a, much of a vision. But we were very blessed right away to have some really great food writers here in the Twin Cities that picked up on it. You know, food writers that were Mikau food writers that were like, "Hey, like we want to put you on the map. You know, we want to talk about you." And then uh, so. Yeah, so it kind of started there, and then as it got bigger and bigger, and we we grew as a team, um, uh, we started putting pieces together. And I, I can't I can't do any of this without any of my team. So we have a great team behind us. Who you know we have um, you know we have a CFO, we have a CEO, uh, we have you know a, a director of uh, catering and, uh, and special events operations. We have a sous chef. We have uh, well we have a, a chef de cuisine. We have two sous chefs. We have a great team of cooks. Um, we, uh, you know, late for the last year, I had this incredible PR person that I work with and then a few different agents that we work with for media stuff. So able to, and then our creative director is incredible and she's the one that helps with all the branding, making sure that everything looks really tight and then tells our story and everything that we do, they, they kind of pass it by me and say, Hey, like, is this true to the story? Is this true to your family story? Is this true to your story? And and so as long as I can honestly look at my mom and dad and clear it with them and say, hey, this is who you guys are. This is your legacy. And we want to be true. We want to honor it. Um, that we pick a project that we want to do. Or if they come, if there's other projects that come up, where we're like, yeah, like, let's do it. That's amazing. I mean, your your social media, your website, it definitely looks very consistent. Pictures look really, really good. So thanks for mentioning all the folks that, um, you know, I, I guess I was thinking that was just, you know, chef, yeah, like, cooking and, 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 you know, like, doing social media, no. taking pictures and all that stuff. Like, Take this wanna, hat off. No, no, you want to hear something super funny. I got kicked out of that because I would put <laughs> a little post. I'm like, ha, this is funny. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. And uh, LC, our, uh, she's our uh, social media manager. She's like, hey, we're gonna like, um, um, what she's like, what's the, like, what's the nicest way of saying this, Yuck? Um, so <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take your password away. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You know, so yeah, she is so good about like creating a really great storyline, and you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, and so I'm like, oh, okay. Like even like some of the emails that uh, like some of the big email like so we have like these like info at you know Union Monkey Chair info at Vini like I'm not allowed to answer them anymore because I'm like oh I'll answer them because I'll freak out because I'm one of those people who, like somebody emails me or messages me I'm like right away I'm like oh my gosh like I don't want to keep with you hanging you know and yeah. she's like no I will answer those so I got my passwords taken away she changed all the passwords <laughs> so she's like you can only do your own social media stuff and your yeah. own like personal emails and your own work emails and everything she kind of took away so I got my hand got slapped and I got in trouble that's hilarious. Well, it definitely sounds like you have been, um, uh, you know, very successful and just had things have kind of, you know, um, uh, gone really well. Um, but what would you consider your biggest mistake? You know, what would you have done differently? Yeah, I think uh, kind of what Olivia said is like having more of a clearer vision. You know, um, I, I've been always one of those people who's like, hey, we'll figure it out on the way, you know. Um, I don't know if you guys ever watched this show growing up, MacGyver. You know, you ever watch that show, MacGyver? You know, the dude that can. Oh man, uh, oh, come on. You can, real still, monk. you can still talk about it. I just you're not real monk. Uh, no, like it, the, the the three people Grandma always watched on TV was uh, Chuck Norris, Walker <laughs> Texas Ranger, uh, any Jean Claude Van Damme movie. Yep. And then MacGyver. And so that's how I learned how to speak English. And like, I'll, I'll sit my grandma and we watch this, right? And MacGyver had this thing where he would just like, any situation, any problem he has, there's like, there's like duct tape, gum, or toothpick, you can figure out and create something, right? Well, so uh, my dad would always be a tinker around the house. Like, you know, she knows how to fix things. He knows how to do a lot of stuff. And so we would be like, hey, dad, mom, 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 where's dad? Like, oh, dad, you know, uh, you know your, your dad's back in the shed, you know? He's, he's being MacGyver. You know, my mom would always say, he's being MacGyver. <laughs> And so we kind of got this thing called mungivering, you know, where it's like, if you need to get out of a situation, but it's going to be very janky put together, you're like we're going to mungive the situation, you know? And so, and so that's kind of how I've always did my life where it's like, I don't know, I don't know how we're doing it. We'll figure it out. You know, we'll just kind of make it up as we go, you know? So we're mungiver the situation. And, um, and, and, and so that's kind of how it was. The one thing I do regret is doing so much of that. And that, that's what, that's what made us what we are. But as we got bigger, 
then mm-hmm. that became a lot because that that's my biggest issue when I when I, when we do our leadership team meeting. I'm like, hey, let's do this. Oh, let's do Faux Fest. Let's do this. Let's do this. And they're like, hey, dude, that's awesome. And we love the vision. But we are trying to create a infrastructure mm-hmm. where you can do that, but we need to be able to do it in an organized way where it's streamlined. And yeah. I don't like the streamlining thing because I'm like, oh, it takes away the authentic realness of it. You know, I'm like, Bleh. But I, what I really realized was I was just not, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at just the organizational process mm-hmm. and having our team, which is an incredible team that says, yeah, like, um, we'll follow you wherever you go, you know, but we need a structure. And so what I love with our team is Dave, who is our CFO. He's the guy that makes sure that we have all our finances in order so we can go the way that we want to go. Marshall, who's our COO, he's our, you know, um, chief operating guy. So he helps build the roads while I set the vision of where we want to go and he helps build the roads. And then the rest of the team says, well, we'll, we'll take that road because that's the safe road, you know? And so when we, we risk a lot of stuff here and there, but um, creating systems has been the, my biggest regret is that I didn't do that because I'm, I'm not good at it. But having this group of team around me, for me, even to be like, you know, like to be done at work, you know, be done at work today at like seven, eight o'clock and being able to do the show, like there's a whole group taking care of it, you know? Yeah. And so that's been super cool. My, my biggest regret was I didn't do the systems thing sooner. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need you to say that again, but to my boss this time regarding <laughs> processes and um, st- infrastructure, that's mm-hmm. all my job right now is just trying to implement all of that good stuff. So I get it. It's important for us to have. Yeah. Um, so growing up or in 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 your chef journey, um, who has been like your role models and mentors along the way? Yeah, like I think we say uh, – uh, chef cooking mentors. Uh, there's a few chefs from around the Twin Cities here that have been incredible. Uh, the two I, that comes off right at the head of, or three, I would say, is a uh, guy named Tim McKee. He's a big chef from around here. He really, he's just one of those, he's like a Mika chef, but he just really loves Southeast Asian flavors. And mm-hmm. so when we came on the scene and we started doing stuff, he said, hey, here's my restaurant. It's free. Just come and use it anytime you want. So and cool. we didn't have a restaurant at that time. So he was yeah. just like, yeah, man, I just, and for him, is I just want to be around these flavors. Uh, mm-hmm. And the next one is Tim Nivers. He's a big restaurant tour guy here. He, uh, we were doing this really big charity event with like 30 other restaurants. And these were some of the biggest and best restaurants in the nation here in the Twin Cities. And we were this small little pop-up. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. It's a, it's this like, uh, it's just like, I think the people, like we had each restaurant had a table that they had to serve, right? And each table, had, I think, had like 12 people and people paid the least, I think, 500 bucks to be there. Wow. And uh, it was a charity event. So and then they each person then um, there was like a five course tasting menu with this five wine pairing. I don't know any of that stuff. I remember Tim Nivers that night. I was like, oh, man, what the frick? I have no idea how to pair wine. I don't even know what fork goes where. Like, you know, I'm like, dude, like I'm a home cook, right? We don't have 15 forks, do we? Have this is our fork right here, you know. This is our spoon, and you know, we just right. But yeah. like, these people are like dressed up to the nines, and it was just this. And Tim came over. Or Tim came over, and he owns like three or four restaurants around here. He goes, "Hey, chef, if you need anything, I got you." I'm like, "I'm like, hey, bro, I don't know how to do this wine thing." He goes, "No, I got you." He came over our table. He set up all the wine. He looked at the menus. Like, okay, this is where I would think this is what the wine you should do. Boom, boom. And and he was just so genuine. So those relations. And then uh, Alex Roberts, he's owns, he's a huge, has all these James Beard awards, very big dude here. But if you met him and had coffee with him, you would never know like how big he really is. And so those three are probably like uh, in the in the industry wise that have been mentors, people who really just help, people who just said, hey, you know, I think Alex Roberts was the one who who pulled me aside. I mean, he I, he, I fanboy when I first met him. He gave me his numbers. Hey, dude, he's like, hey, chef, just give me a call anytime you need. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm shaking, you know. And I remember Alex said to me, his, he pulled me aside once and he said, hey, I don't know why, but Hmong food should be part of the culinary conversation here. Like, you know, you know how every, he's like every day when people go, oh, we're going to eat Mexican food or we're going we're gonna to have Mexican or we're going to have, you know, French or we're going to have barbecue. He's like, I want to see Hmong food part of that conversation. And I don't know why it's, it's not, you know, and come to find out that he grew up with, you know, like when he was in uh, high school or uh, elementary school, he grew up with a bunch of Hmong kids as friends. 
-hmm. and he just loved the way that their family was just so open to him. Yeah. And and so for him, it was like it's coming full circle, you know. And, but he's such a big celebrity chef here. But he's just, you know, in internationally. Oh, you know, he's well known. But he just gave us time. And when we were uh, raising uh, money for V9, he said, "Hey, use my restaurant." I, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to charge you anything. Use my restaurant. And we're gonna make we're gonna put on these fancy bougie dinner here, and everything you make here, that money goes towards you guys. That's you know, so, so awesome. those three, yeah. And then I would, and then I, you know, it sounds cliche, but I would say, mom and dad has been like my biggest inspiration. You know, and I'm not saying that because it's like the right you know thing to say or whatever, but it really has, really has. I I I learn, I learn how to hold a knife, break down a side of a cow, you know, at age 12 because dad would put us out in the garage and do it. I hated it, but I love it now. Yeah. You know, I learned how to what they watching my mom. You know, the way that my mom talks about what they and learning life lessons from the garden. You know, um, this past season, uh, you know, my mom then they have this huge acre of uh, of garden in La Una. And I was like, man, mom, like, you, you know, there's a lot of Joe over there. Like, why aren't you guys taking the, you know, the, the Joe out there? And there's a bunch of, you know, produce there that you, why aren't you harvesting it? And she goes, Well, honey, that's that's our um that's our part of the garden where it's just the seeds. We just grow that for seeds. We don't eat that. And I learned that really translated to me what it means to be Hmong. Like what it really means to be Hmong is that one generation has to sacrifice a little bit of themselves so that the next generation can grow. Mm. And I learned that from watching my mom what they, yeah. you know, like the way that they, what they defines who we are as Hmong people. I mean, our, our parents' generation sacrificed a lot so we can be here in America, we can be citizens, we, we can dream and we can do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. Now, the question I ask our generation is what are we gonna sacrifice so that the generation of our kids, our nieces and nephew, our little cousins, that they get a chance to grow too. Yeah. I learned that from my mom watching her what they is They're incredible. So and deep. Yeah, and, ooh, I feel like we have to like mic drop. Like, let's just. I know. <laughs> That's a challenge to all of those out there listening. Is what can we do? You know, yeah. to to ensure that our the generation behind us is successful, and that they yeah, don't my, forget their origin mm -hmm. and, and who they are and where they come from. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, my brother, my older brother, always says this thing where he said, "You know, we truly stand on the shoulders of giants." And I think about that. I think about my grandpa who died in the war. I think about my uncles who died in the war. I think about my mom and dad who were in the camps for 10 years. We were born in there. And I think about all the crappy jobs my dad took just so that we would have shoes on our feet and shirts to wear, you know, even though it was from Kmart or Target, but whatever, like just so that we had, so that we never had to look at all these other kids and say, well, we didn't have that much. We didn't have anything like them. Like mom and dad did everything so that we were without excuse, you know? And that's the thing I love. And that's the thing I love about being Hmong. And, and I, you know, and again, the inspiration comes from mom and dad, man. Like that's, that's what they do. And their life still reflects it. They're in their late sixties and they're all retired, but you know, all the, a lot of our produce and the quetzal and the vegetables and all the stuff we get for the restaurant it's from mom's garden. Yeah, They'll just go and they'll harvest it out. Doesn't they don't ask for a dime at all. You know, we, uh, mom, yeah, mom has a, uh, she has a quotza she makes for us and we just call it Mama Bang's hot sauce. And it's become very well known here and people ask for it. And yeah. the other day, um, I have a few chef friends that are really big name chef guys uh, in the industry. I remember I gave it to them and they're like, dude, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. And I went home and I'm like, mom, these chefs who are some of the best, like in, in the US, in, the, in, the, in America, have been named some of the best chefs in America. They love your hot sauce. Mom's just so funny. She's like, oh, okay, well, if they want more, just you know, give them some more. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, you don't understand. Like, like this dude was named one of the 10 chefs in America last year, and he loves your hot sauce. Yeah. Like, That's nice. You know, if they ever want more, you know, I got some more here. You know? <laughs> oh my god. I love so that humility. Really, I love that humbleness. Like, I know. like it's definitely from like a place of love that our parents, you know, I, I feel like they our parents aren't like the most um, where they will say, I love you. Right. But then I feel yeah. like they show that's how they show their love is through yeah. their thing. And so speaking of love, I'm going to talk about not, you know, <laughs> on and yes, I'm gonna talk about the other love. Right. Um, so we are very curious. And of course, if you don't know, we have the love vault. And so our minds are very much about love. And so curious, how is your love life going? 
<laughs> um, <laughs> your love life. Someone uh, asked that question earlier too. It's probably Shang. I know Shang. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I've been really just, uh, okay. I'll be very frank. I think if, if you had this conversation with my mom, it'd be different, you know, cause she has, I'm the only one in my family. I have seven siblings, right? No, six, seven, oh, whatever. They're all married. They all have kids. I'm the only one not married, no kids. You know, I'm 37. So in, in Hmong years, I'm like, you know, like 80 or 90 years old now, you know? Um, I, yeah, the, the last, I would say five, six years has just been really focusing hard on, uh, the hustle and the grind. Um, I, I know that the, the life I have isn't, if it's not a nine to five. You know, I think that, you know, I think we were talking about like, what's a typical day, you know, yeah. uh, it's not real nine to five. Um, uh, there, you know, there has to be flexibility. And then I know I watch my siblings. I think it's amazing because some of them work really hard, but they're, they're able to have that family time, that family downtime. And yeah. I don't know. So I've just been kind of just focusing on this, uh, of building the, v, you know, building uh, the Vina restaurant and, you know, keeping Union Monk Kitchen going. And so it's just been, uh, just focus on that for a long time. But, so, but then you I are, mean, I go on dates here and there, but she's like, eh. You should hear, you should hear my mom, though. She's. Just, <laughs> I feel like my mom's trying to make a, like a business arrangement or something. When she talks to me. <laughs> and I know when she, because like, she'll, you know, I mean, we were talking about how like mom sometimes just randomly calls you at some certain time. And I always feel bad because I'm like, oh, I don't want to pick it up, which I pick it up. And so I pick it up. And then, she, you know, and then she's just like, oh, you know, cool. I'm like, fudge, I know where you're going with this, you know? So I end up going, uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, losing connection. Well, I'm like, oh yeah, order's coming in. I gotta go. So, you know. <laughs> That's so funny. So, so, let, okay. So you're, you're a still single. Uh, so let's say because you are a chef, are you looking for someone who is also a chef or can they just not know how to cook? Uh, what's you know, your preference? I, <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me, you know, like, uh, you know, like, so I have friends in, in the industry who are married to, you know, to other chefs. So it's, there's, you know, there's some, some, some simplicity and understanding schedule, you know, um, like one of my good buddy, uh, Gustavo, he, uh, you know, he's a Mexican chef. He's incredible. He's awesome. I, I love him. His, you know, his wife, um, uh cat she's she's polish like her, her her mom's like from poland polish uh but they're both chefs they met as they were chefs and at one point he she worked she worked under him you know um but uh like so when i talked to them she's like yeah she's like good they have a kid now so she's like yeah i understand like you know like i take care of the kid and you know i do as much as i can but i understand his schedule you know i i have, I have friends who are in the industry who are married to people that are not in the industry and sometimes that's just even better too, you know? So it, yeah. it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I think what my mom always says, and my mom says like, we're just looking for somebody that, you know, loves you and loves, you know, your family and loves us, you know? That's all we really ask for, we don't. And I think my mom and dad have been really awesome about how they're like, we don't care what they look like, what their color is, what their background is. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as they love our family and they love you, like that's all we, that's all we really want, so. Yeah. So I guess I another know. way to ask that is, what are deal breakers then? Whatever you're like, you know, you know what? I I I've really found that I am attracted to women who are uh, like are just like really driven, you know. And I I, I, mean, I hope I hope I don't get in trouble saying that, but like 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 just really driven and passionate about what they do, regardless of what it is, right? So, you know, like you can work corporate or whatever, but you know, if you're passionate about what you do or if you have a passion that drives you, um, I, I think that it's about finding somebody who can come along, we can come alongside each other and be like, hey baby, like you're killing it. It's awesome. I'm your number one fan. Whoever I end up being with, like I want to be their number one fan. That's it. Hands yeah. down. Like I want to be your number one fan. I want to be behind you. You know, I'm if I have to stop the things I'm doing, I'm willing to do it because being number your number one fan is more important. You know, um, yeah. and I think that it's just also finding someone who says, hey, like my schedule is not going to look normal and, you know, we're going to have to hunker down a little bit. Uh, but like, I'll, you know, I'll always be here for you. You know, uh, my buddy, uh, he was in med school 
and right after college, right? And so he got married, him and his wife, they got married right after college. And they were in this like, kind of like college, you know, med school town for a little bit. And they had this small apartment and she, I remember he had told me, he's like, yeah, she wanted to go and, you know, buy all these new furniture and stuff, but we were only going to be there for two and a half years, right? And he's like, he sat his wife down and, and this is like one of the greatest lessons I learned. He sat his wife down and goes, babe, if you can just stick with me for two and a half years, because it was a lot of him doing clinical studies, you know, it's med school, right? right? Mm -hmm. He goes, if you can just stick with me for two years, like I promise when I, you know, when I'm out of, when we're, I'm, I'm out of school, like I'll give you everything you want. And now it's incredible. They have four kids. They have like a huge, like 10 acre piece of land they live on. She gets to do everything she wants. You know, she rebuilds um, uh, little like, uh, like trailers and stuff like that. She does all the things. She does everything with their kids that they want, you know? And I remember, and I just talked to her, I'm like, bro, that's so awesome. I remember the day when you told me, you're like, I told her, like, if you promise, if we can hunker down for two and a half years, like, I'll give you everything you want. And he has an incredible job. And, you know, he does amazing things. He, he, and, you know, we were just actually on the phone the other day. And I learned a lot of these lessons from my buddies that are married. And he just said, I can't be doing my job. Like, he's got this dream job. I can't do what I do unless Megan okay, allows it. And, mm -hmm. she, and she has to be okay first with everything. And so like when I, I hear stuff like that, that really inspires me to be like, dude, like that's, that's what I'm looking for, you know, where we can have our own love and interest of whatever, but man, we're just each other's number one fan. And I assume she has to do the dishes at least. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I actually like doing the dishes now. You know, you want to hear um, something super funny is doing the dishes for me is like one of the funnest things. Cause, cause in the world I work with, like nothing's ever ending, right? It's just like, there's always this process, process, process. I don't know when it's going to end. Oh, we're starting this project. Oh, we, we have this thing we're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Dishes, it's like, you, it's all messy. You put it in, you know, you soak it, you wash it, you clean it, you dry it. There's a, there's a start and then there's an end. And it's the best time for me. Like if I need to think, I usually just leave a lot of dishes in my sink. And then when I need to think, I just sit there and then just wash dishes and I get to think because it's so mundane. My hands are so used to it. I mean, I started in the kitchen as a dishwasher. And I would yeah. play games on like, how would I stack all these? I play these games. Like, how do I stack like Tetris almost like, how do I stack all these plates on this? As I put it in there, like, I, I, I fit the most amount of plates, you know, but like, there's just something that's so calming. And a lot of cooks, if you talk to them, this is what we do. There's something that's so calming when you can take some dirty stuff, clean it. And there's an end and it looks, and it's all like stacks looks perfectly. Like that's one of my, one of my weirdest things in our kitchen is like, if there's some dishes, um that's that's what i do i'm like half the time i'm like the dishwasher at the kitchen that's it yeah. you know because it just feels so good when you take that dirty plate with that dirty like look or whatever you put it in that wire and let it soak and then you scrape that stuff off you're just like oh my god oh this is okay. <laughs> oh yeah that's the stuff you know it's, it's music to our ears honestly yeah. i like a man yeah. who wants to wash dishes washing dishes is therapeutic and so i think you're you're absolutely right there's some something about just and you you know you have to stay there and wash them and it's clean and it just feels yeah. very refreshing and if, if you're like a single dude or a dating dude washing dishes with your girl or even a married dude like that's like that's almost like that has it has a sense of sexiness to it too, you know, because like you know you get to be playful and da da da. You know? uh, uh, whatever. I can tell you that it, for me, it's more of just like hurry up so we can both go rest together. Uh, so normally, absolutely, I get normally that. Normally, yeah. when my husband washes this, he he likes to take his sweet time, <laughs> and I'm like, I could have been done already. You know, let's go. You you soap it up. I'll rinse it off. Let's dry it, and then we both can just then relax. So, yeah, you can judge a man on how he, you know, has sexy time. By the way, he washes dishes. <laughs> does he does he take his time? Or is he just like, oh, no, let's do this. No, he does take his time. He takes his yeah. sweet time. But We're you know, I'm the dishes, person right? where I'm just like, I'm like <laughs> hurry up. I want to Are talking about dishes? Right? Or... We talking about dishes. Well, I don't know okay, what you're talking about. I just about. wanted to be clear what we were talking about there. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about dishes. I don't know what you two was talking about. So I don't know, dude. I'm just... I, don't know I love it. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> moving on. We got off topic there for a second. Sorry, guys. <laughs> 
It's not PG-13. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think you already an, a, uh, answered our, our next question about what's your favorite wrong dish. So I don't think that we'll go into that. But we can do the what we can expect. So what yeah. can we expect from you in the next five years? Oh. Hopefully we'll be done with uh, Vina and that'll be built out. Uh, I think one of one of our kind of future vision that we talk about is being able to open more restaurants, uh, but not restaurants that necessarily moan restaurants, but mm -hmm. restaurants that we're taking from some of our cooks and chefs that we have now who are, you know, whose background is, you know, one of them's Mexican, the other one's, uh, uh, you know, African-American, uh, Thai, uh, Cambodian, Chinese, you know, and seeing what they're passionate about and so that we can help seed some of their ideas uh, within our company. Uh, I think that one of the things that we really want to do is, uh, for me personally, I want to do is uh, to be, be able to control content. So yeah. an arm is a content arm, a media content arm on um, being able to work with uh, different uh, storytellers, uh, uh, video production people. We've been doing a little bit of that and that's been really, really fun. Uh, yeah. But being able to tell the story of the Hmong people starting from food, but then getting deeper, you know? Um, and I think, um, you know, I think I don't know, it's not really official yet, but we, uh, we're, we, uh, we have a really cool book agent who we're working on a project together. So that's like really fun. Um, it's going to be a long project. It's going to be one of those things where I think that when we do it, it's not going to be a, just a traditional like cookbook, but it's going to be w like why these dishes and how these dishes tell stories about our family yeah um like just even as simple as we always say there what's the four element of a monk food on monk table right you got your rice you got your uh uh your uh your meat you got your uh zhao, which sometimes is guo and then you got your guo mm -hmm. and out of those four elements what we really want to do is say how do we tell the story of the monk people but more importantly as you dig in how do you know my mom and dad's stories how do you see their legacy grow and so that's in the next five years. I think that's a big project that we're working on um, and being very blessed to have some connections that we have that are that are bigger, uh, that we want to uh, we want to kind of take it, you know, more of a national platform for it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that's kind of it. And then just I don't know. That's yeah. Basically, it's kind of some of the things that we're uh, we're doing. So, yeah. So. I, I think this question, I, I really wanted to ask you this question just because mm -hmm. I know that, you know, when, when one, one person, when we all win kind of, kind of thing for me, what type of advice would you give to someone who is starting out their journey and on becoming a chef? Honestly, I say, don't do it. <laughs> 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 uh, no, uh, you know, it's funny. We, we, we had, uh, they had me go speak to a bunch of uh, culinary students <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the chef that was interviewing me was like, "What? What's one thing here that you would say to these culinary students?" I'm like, "Don't do this. Go into IT, crypto, you know, and uh, NFTs." No, it's funny. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Um, I. This is what I. I would say. I would say, if you want to go into this, you have to know your why. Your why has to be your drive. That when you are tired when it's two in the morning and you still got stacks of dishes to do when nobody is around you, when you're looking at your sales and it's like, wow, our sales went down 50% this week. When you're looking at your, uh, the, the people that you're working with, you're like, we have to cut half of you guys. You have to know your why. When, when four banks turn you down for a loan, you still have to know your why. And for me, like, and I'm not trying to be cheesy, but when I close my eyes, I, I there's this picture uh, of my mom and dad, and and um, and and then there's this picture of I think of them when uh, it was our uh, registration picture from you know from the refugee camp to here, and they're just holding us. Mm -hmm. We were just kids, and as I look at that picture, I just see in their eyes like like this too shall pass. And something greater is yet to come. You know, my mom calls me and she, you know, like we grew up in the church and she always just says, like, you know, like she prays for me every day. And she's like, hey, I just want you to know I'm praying about the restaurant. I'm praying about the bank. I'm praying about, you know, the loan that's going trying to go through right now. 
you know, and it's like every time I leave their house, you know, she'll always ask like, hey, how's it going? And I feel embarrassed. I feel very shameful. Like it's not going as good as you think it is, mom. But she's still like, it's like, I'm, I have your back. Your dad and I, we always will have your back. It was something my dad taught me when I was really, when I was younger, right when I went to college. He said, no matter what happens to you, no matter if you fail every part of your life, your mom and dad, she just said, he just said, your, your mom and I, we're your home. You can always come home. Doesn't matter how old you are. And dad has this weird way of saying it. He's always like, as long as I have breath in my lungs, I will always be your father and I will always be your home. So when you have something like that, where there's this safe ground, where no matter what you risk, and if you fall and they will always catch you, they're not gonna ask any questions, they're not gonna look at you as a failure. No matter what happens, then you can dare to dream, you can risk. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I fail a lot, I do. Uh, but if somebody wants to go this chef food route thing, it better be more than just trend. It better be more than like, oh, this is what's really cool and sexy right now. Like food trucks are really cool. Food truck sucks, dude. We did it for freaking two years. It sucks. It was so cold here that one day when I came in in the food truck, the 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 um the the fryer, the oil was frozen. It looked like one big thing of butter, like like a hard mm -hmm. yellow butter. I was mm -hmm. like, dude, screw this. Our our pipes in the winters froze all the time, so we didn't have any water in there. So we would have to go into the brewery, get cold water, uh, hot water in a bucket, bring it in, and then just have it enough for about two hours before that water got cold, and we had to go back. Things broke down constantly. It's not as sexy as everyone thinks it is. And like, I'm being real with people who want to go into this. You have to know your why. You have it has to make sense. There were some days where we only did like hundred and ten dollars in sale. That didn't that didn't even pay for our staff. You know, but it's like you have to know your why. You you have it has to make sense. And if it and and, and if it's you're chasing glory, if you're chasing money, if you want to make a name for yourself, this is not the job for you. This is not the path to go. But if somebody wants to do this, I say what you do is you go to a restaurant and say, Hey, I, I want to come and just prep for you. Do you have any space for me? And you learn and you learn because one of the saddest things I get is young, young Hmong cooks that will come up to me and goes, I want to be on YouTube like you. I want to be, have my own TV show like you. I want to do this. Like, that's what I inspire to. Literally, those are the guys that come cook with us. Those kids, literally three weeks, they're gone. Not even. Wait, mm -hmm. wait, wait what, do you, what do you mean I have to peel like 80 pounds of this? Yeah, dude, that's just part of what we do. Yeah. It's not, you know, um, uh, my, my grandma passed a few years ago and I went to the, we went to the funeral and I didn't know this until after, but one, one of my aunts came up to my, to my, uh, mom and said oh you know um apparently one of my cousins who uh, you know you know you know how among people we have like so many cousins so one of my cousins saw me there and he went up to his mom who's you know my aunt and said or he went to his mom and said oh did you see that Gia guy there like he's like that guy that he's like, he's like that chef guy like how does he know grandma he's like well that's his grandma too and and i i my mom told me this story i laughed and i'm like mom they don't get it they only see like one percent but like, there's all these other things where it's very, very, very hard. And there are days like, yeah, I, I come home alone, you know? And then there are days where you, I just literally sit there and I'll watch like sports center and I'll zone out for an hour. And I'm like, that silence is just amazing. You know, I don't have to make decisions and, you know, but, uh, but if somebody who really wants to do this, I say, what you do is you go learn and you go learn all the hard things first. And mm -hmm. once you do that, I think that that's when it's, like that's when it starts digging in and saying, hey, is this something I can see myself doing for a while? And, and then you find your why. Like, why are you doing this? And yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Hey. I, think, I think the why is really important. I think it's just not just in being a chef, but I think in anything that you do, like your, your why does have to be really mm -hmm. strong because it's that sustainability too, right? Mm -hmm. Like you need your why to continue doing yeah. what you're doing. Um, a few months ago, I got a chance to meet Jami when she came here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're working on a collaboration with her, uh, with their rice, um, yeah. and stuff like that. So we've been able to use it and demo it. We got, I got a chance to demo it on TV and it was really fun. And, uh, I, I look at someone like Jummy, who's like, you're right. she's like, I kind of joke and say, she's like the Shania Twain, right? Mm -hmm. Like very old school, like Faith Hill, Shania Twain type, you know, where yeah. they put in the work and, and you should just probably ask her like, how many of these like concerts did you put on where it's like, $50, like, are you guys like 50 bucks a show or you got nothing? And there was like four people out there. 
but you went out and you still sang your heart out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they see her now and they're like, oh my gosh, like, yo, yeah, that's, no, you don't see the work that went in. Yeah. And I think that young Hmong people and just young people in general, they don't get that. I feel old saying that, but they don't get that. Like the hustle, the grind, the grit, that's real. Our parents did that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, do you know how many times my mom, uh, how many seasons my mom will there and be like, oh man, this is, this, this is just a flop season. You yeah. know, and it's just like, oh my gosh, you spent freaking six months out there and it was a flop. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the hustle, that's determination. And some of these young kids, man, I just want to be like, dude, you guys got to go out there. And literally, like I say, you have to cut yourself a couple of times with your knife to understand like, wow, this does hurt. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah, it's definitely, I feel like it's definitely like the the journey, right? Like mm -hmm. not really like your character, your growth and like the joy and stuff when what you're going to look back on is like the experience of doing it all. It's never like, mm -hmm. oh, I got to this point. It's like all the times that you, you know, just like embrace all that hard mm -hmm. and, and all the struggles and stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Like that was yeah. um, just really good advice. Great. I know. Yeah. Exactly. It's a good reminder after today. I had a long day at work. So that was, <laughs> nice. What's our why, Callie? What's our why? <laughs> I, I'm with you guys on that. Like, you know, uh, there's uh, there's this there's this UPS place that's like kind of by where I uh, where we go get a lot of our product and produce. There's a UPS place and there's a sign. I looked at that sign for the last six years. The sign says starting wage twenty five dollars an hour plus five thousand dollar bonus. And I look at that and there are days where I'm like, man, should I just fill out an application? <laughs> like, I just want to fill out an application. Go throw boxes, nine to five, throw boxes, freaking have insurance, have dental, have vision. Like, that would be so amazing. Have a 401k, like, you know? Yeah. Like, that would be so awesome, you know? But I think that there's a part of my heart where it's just like, man, like, I, I feel very, like, I, I feel it's on me and like some of my siblings like it's on our shoulder to show the to show the story of our our family you know and so that's where you know for me my why is that yeah that's that's amazing that's that's really great to hear i mean i think that um you know anything worthwhile is just gonna you know take work and um and and any any role any job right it's not always like super highs like sometimes there are lows mm -hmm. like you said sometimes you're having to peel potatoes like um, sometimes you're sitting, you know, in front of spreadsheets for hours and hours and, and getting your eyes all twisted up. And so it's not always like, um, you know, just just what people see on the outside. There's a lot mm -hmm. of scenes that that yeah. goes on. So how can people reach you? How can they support you, um, you know, connect with you? Yeah. If you're <laughs> excuse me, if you're in the Twin Cities area or, you know, in Minneapolis <clears throat> or uh, where Union Monk Kitchen is at. Uh, gray's food hall so you can come out there open seven days a week uh, uh 11, we open lunch to eight o'clock on from monday to thursday lunch to eight and then friday saturday we'll open a little later and then sunday we're open all day 11 uh to uh six or something like that so yeah just come on out yeah eat with us uh, we have some really just fun dishes out there um it's you know i, I say it's Hmong food because it's made by Hmong people uh, but sometimes we get we get crapped on because it's like, oh, this is not healthy to make. And I'm like, okay, calm down, you know. <laughs> um, we get some of the very traditionalists, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, the like the pho we have is called uh, we it's a uh, corned beef pho. So you know, so we use a brisket, we make corned beef out of it, you know, with uh, with pho seasoning and flavoring. It's really good. But Hmong people, some Hmong people are like, oh, this is not how you make pho. I'm like, I, I know that's why it's called corned beef pho, you know. Yeah. Um, or even the way we do our kapong, you know, it's it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit brothier. So people are like, yeah, I don't know, you know, you know how Hmong people are sometimes. But uh, we just say we we uh, we have you know we have our we we have this thing called the zhongxia meal or it's our happy meal, and you know and you just get it's, it's sticky rice. You get a protein, you get a vegetable, and you get gozao with it, you know. So yeah, yeah, we do that. Um, if you know if you follow us, oh, man, I feel like a seventh grade girl, but if you follow us on Instagram, you know, you know it's. Uh, for me, it's a at Yeo Vang seven zero, and then at V nine M N, and at Union Monk Kitchen M N, or it's, I don't know, it's at Union Monk Kitchen. Uh, you just you know follow us on Instagram. You'll see all our things we're doing. We were constantly doing different events, uh, different pop ups around here in Twin Cities. Uh, we just love to have more of a Hmong presence when we do it. it. I mean, there are a few Hmong people that come, but you know, uh, it's it's a lot of Mijia people, which I love. Like, don't get me wrong, 
Uh, but, you know, I think just to have some uh, more of a bigger monk presence, that would be super fun. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, we're doing that. And then if you keep up with our social media, you'll hear all the our announcements and everything that we're doing. Um, and then, I don't know, kind of a shameless pug, but uh, the local PBS show here, I, I host a TV show for them called Relish. So we are, our season four just started kicking off. Uh, but there's three seasons in there you guys can watch. So I just go to, it's so fun. I just go to okay. different uh, homes of, of different chefs or food makers. And we just learn about their, their culture, their family. And the very first episode, season one, episode one is I'm, I'm at mom's house and we're making kalapo together, you know, oh, and she's wow. telling me I'm doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. on TV. <laughs> And the producers loved it, and they put it on there. And they translated her little thing too. It's like, oh, you're doing that wrong. Like, oh, I'm doing that wrong. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, and you know, we've been again, we've been very blessed to be able to be on uh, different uh, platforms, uh, media platforms. So if you want to go watch us, you can always go see kind of what we're doing. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, and just for showcasing like. Um, uh, Hmong dishes and just representing Hmong. I think it's always mm. really nice when I meet people and they have interacted with like Hmong people before, or, or you know, like it's not like this like surprise look of wait, what is that? You know, I, I love when I and mm. then I through um, uh, your work, it's through you know everybody that has come before me, their work and they're talking about who we are and stuff. Mm. It, 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 you know, I think that that is, uh, you know, just like we we're talking earlier, how do we, you know, make sure that our, the, the folks behind us um, uh, succeed. And I think that's from, you know, trying to lean into who we are as Hmong people and being proud of that versus um, feeling like, you know, that we came from a lot of hardships and sufferings and that we have to lean away. I think we really need to lean into that and get the strength um, uh, and inspiration from what our parents have gone through to get us here. And so thank you so much for um, coming on today, for sharing your story, for sharing like just so much wealth and wisdom with us today. And, um, you know, I, I urge everyone in the audience to please tell Chef Yia Bing to enter our love vault. We would love to <laughs> find him. Oh. Yeah, right? We would love oh, man. You know, and so um, definitely, you know, go on his social media and tell him get into all the <laughs> love vaults. Come on now. Um, but um, uh, before we close for the night, again, um, definitely be sure to tune into Jami's MTT International Concert, which again will be on Christmas Day at 7 p.m. PST. Um, also that we are coming to Fresno New Year. Um, we will be showing some um, uh, more posts about that and just what we plan to do. So please definitely come to our booth and come support us and come take some pictures, hang out. Um, we're going to make some TikTok videos too. And so we are also on TikTok, just like each chef Yelling, you know, we're all feeling like seven, you know, seven, one, <laughs> seven year old teenagers doing TikTok videos. And so um, just come hang out with us at, at Fresno New Year. I think that so much of our time have been spent behind the screen talking to everyone. Yeah interacting and we really just want to be out there and talking with you guys and and just getting to that face-to-face -face connection um and again you know with the love vault anyone is welcome we are really really excited to launch this we want to help more people find love um we believe in love you know um just like you know Jeff yes talked about you know i think that um uh, there's a lot of great people out there um and you know as much as the love that we get from our parents i think that we also want love that is outside of that as well and so definitely please come join us in the love vault if you are single only single okay no married people so <laughs> um, with that of course here all that talk that conversation strive change and change starts with you we'll see you soon bye